Hello everyone, I'm Rec V5. And I'm Sandman99. And welcome back to Fallout 4 G9-13 playthrough. Yes, and here we are at Kingsport Lighthouse. And uh, obviously, <clears throat> off camera, I've been doing a little work on this place. Yep. And I uh, built a couple of levels on top of the ruined house after scrapping the, uh, you know, pretty much next to useless roof. Yep. And I put uh, a windmill up here to generate a little power. And uh, we head down this flight of stairs. There's like a whole bunch of beds on this level. And I put in a bathroom over here as well. And then we head down to the ground. Because what I did was I just put a set of stairs in directly up there. So there's actually two levels yep. above the uh, existing house. And, of course, we have a little gardening space out here. There's actually quite a lot of farming space in, the, in this particular uh, settlement. Even though it's a fairly small footprint, there's lots of stuff that's suitable. And we decorated the place. And put some rugs down. Put some rugs down. We uh, put some stuff in the kitchen here. And... Uh, then if we head up in here, we put a whole bunch of beds in this area as well. And then, of course, out here, we just built onto the uh, catwalk out here a little bit so we could throw some guns on there. So uh, I was getting all ready, geared up to head for Far Harbor. And then I bumped into a settler that says, my friend has been kidnapped. <laughs> And you know what? It's one thing to ignore uh, settlement attacks for settlements that are halfway across the map. But you can't ignore but, this. But you can't ignore this, especially on a, on a brand new settlement like this that's only got two settlers in it. So we have to go to Dunwich Borers. And, and get your other settler and back. Rest, and get my other settler back, yeah. Because uh, this one here, in, in fact, it's the farming settler by the looks of it that got kidnapped. So. Wow, what an incompetent guard. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's funny that the, the guns there didn't shoot anybody that tried coming in here, too. So anyway, you can kind of get an idea of what this place looks like. After I did a little bit of building on it. And, of course, I made use of the uh, chain link fence that I got from a mod. Yep. I Also, in that building, the boathouse down there, there's a whole bunch of beds in there. And I managed to squeeze a couple of beds into that cabin of that boat, too. Nice. And I built a little bit of platforms and stuff on that boat so that you can actually get up into the front of it. Yep. And put a couple of gun turrets up there, too. So, oops, now I'm going to fall down the cliff here. <laughs> so anyway, it's uh, pretty much all ready to go. Uh, got a settler's beacon going on and all that kind of good stuff, so this place will, you know, eventually attract more settlers. I'll probably have to, one, even once we eventually make it to Far Harbor, I'll have to make a trip back into the Commonwealth from time to time because uh, uh, the uh, Coastal Cottage Settlement is also just a very newly established settlement that's going to need a little attention as well. Especially if it gets attacked. Well, not only that, but these settlements will grow. And you'll need to put and in more And then I'll food. have to go in and put more crops in and, you know, assign settlers to jobs and all that kind of stuff, right? Water pumps. Yep, add more water and all that kind of stuff. The other settlements I don't have to pay quite so much attention to because they're already pretty much at the maximum population that they're ever going to get. And I've already developed them to support those populations, right? Yep. So anyway, uh, I also made a little few changes in my uh, my weapon load out here. I decided now I'm going to start working on Gunslinger. Oh, okay. Because I do have a, uh, a legendary Juger pistol with the dead eye legendary on it. Yep, yep. And uh, I've also picked up Eddie's piece, you know, like when I went and uh, and uh, killed Eddie Winter for for Nick. Yep. 
And that does more limb damage, so it's basically got the crippling effect, right? And, uh, what else have I got here? I also, just while I was out traveling around off-camera, I found this break-action laser, which does double damage if the target is at full health. So this thing actually will do more damage as a sniper weapon than the Gauss rifle will. Wow. Yeah, because the, you can see the posted damage is 419. But double damage at full health. But double damage if you shoot a target that's at full health. So I put a long range scope on it, and now this is going to be my new uh, sniper weapon. And of course I put the uh, discharger type muscle, muzzle on it, so it fires a single beam. Yep. So it'll be accurate at long ranges, because I've already got plenty of, uh, you know, like powerful short range weapons, right? It's got a pretty nice scope too, actually, if you will have a quick look through it here. So when you look through this scope, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty nice scope, right? Yep. So it's a good, accurate, long-range weapon that actually uh, is better than the Gauss rifle that I found. <laughs> now I have to have a drink of water. And, of course, I also found a two-shot, this is what I've had it for a while, a two-shot Ruger Mark V pistol. Mm. And because I've got the highest levels of gun nut and science, I was able to put the highest level receiver on this thing, plus, plus the um, uh, cr highest level cryo edition. Ah, uh, so it also freezes, too. So it freezes things, yeah. And I just put a nice little reflex sight on it, and... Uh, and hopefully it's a little bit more than a pop gun. Yeah. Well, see, with my uh, current uh, private playthrough that I'm doing, I've got a Ruger Mark V pistol that I've got all done up. And uh, I've got four ranks of Gunslinger, and that gun does a base, I think, of 80 points of damage. Yep. Which is pretty good. And of course, it's Christmas colored because uh, you love the Christmas. I, I like the Christmas colors. Okay, so uh, anytime, whoops, wrong one. Anytime that I uh, use a uh, Ruger Mark V, of course, I give it the the, the Christmas co themed colors, right? Yep. So there you go. And of course, this one has an under barrel flashlight and uh, a laser sight as well. Although the laser sight really uh, doesn't work so well in third person. You know, like you're better off just putting the, the, the targeting dot on whatever it is you want to shoot. Yep. But in first person, you can actually kind of hip shoot with it. And if you put the, the laser, you know, like the end of the laser over whatever the target is you want to shoot. Yeah, like the be... gun is actually facing yeah. where the laser points. That's right. But uh, the guy who made this mod... Um, also did explain that uh, the laser sight is not accurate in third person, right? Yep. And that's just the difference between first person and third person models, I guess? Yeah, well, it's also a question of the perspective, right? Because uh, in first person, you're more or less looking... Down even, the sight. You know, down the, down the sight, pretty much. Whereas in third person, you're sort of, you know, looking off from one side, right? Yep. So I've been here before and pretty much cleaned this area out. So I don't know whether any uh, new raiders of respawn. Okay, well, it looks like that, that guy has. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, so much for him. <laughs> Oh yeah, this thing fires two shots, just like a shotgun too, right? Oh. Looks like it burns through ammo quite quick though. Yeah. 
yeah, I take I'm, it that's I'm, the I'm probably going to yeah well see the re one of the reasons that it hits so hard I think is that uh, it, it uses like it eight burns, months yeah it burns like eight fusion cells per shot right so it's almost kind of like if you had an eight crank laser musket yep but as you can see it'll one shot just about anything that you shoot with it right Just that guy can't decide what he wants to do now. I oh, guess the cliff's in the way there. Anyhow, we'll have to switch to something else just because... Uh... I love how the, uh, the punt gun is a stealth sniping weapon in this situation. Yeah, that's right. You just gotta make sure you don't hit the extended cliff face. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Machine gun turret. Oh. Yeah, that's in a weird place. But that's okay, we'll uh, we'll destroy that, and then I think there's another one there. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think that takes care of the resistance out here. I guess some of them had respawned, but uh, not all of them, right? Yep. Oh man, the invisible uh, hand railing or invisible ledge thing would be a terrible thing if you were sniping with a punt gun. You go to shoot past the railing or past the ledge and you blow yourself up? Yeah. That being said, though, I am equipped with, uh, you know, like, dents and uh, padded. So you'll take 75% uh, less instant death damage. That's right. <laughs> well, actually, though, that might be enough to make the difference, right? Do you want to put bets on that? Uh, well, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's, it's usually a good idea to uh, avoid, you know, self-harm. I was going to be like, on this episode, Sandman 99 shoots himself in the feet with a punt gun. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not going to happen. Oh, man. You know, like, you, you don't... You d uh oh, what the hell's going on now? You're being attacked? By what? Let's get out a weapon. Close I have range. a... Oh. Okay. I guess by that. I guess I missed a turret. All right. I think it's all good now. But I may want to go with something that's a little bit less noisy in the uh, inside, hey. Yep. Maybe we'll go with this. So I'm not sure if any uh remember the last time we were in here there was all those uh uh, vampires in here? Yeah, all the crazy strong vampires. Yeah, and uh, so I'm not sure if any of them might have respawned or not, but just in case, I have a feeling that this fire-based weapon will probably be pretty good against them. Well, and it might be good to uh, have something that can pack a punch too, because those guys are tough. I'm probably going to have to... Okay, well, it looks like maybe I don't have to go too far. Right? Because it looks as though uh, my uh, kidnapped settler is not too far away. Okay. 
or maybe I do have to go quite a ways, I don't know. <laughs> wonder if I can go backward in this place now. Like if that door up at the top of this thing is still open. Then Possibly. I can, then I can make my way backward and maybe I don't have to... Oh, Red Rocket South Boston is under attack. They can get over it. Yeah, that door is still open, so maybe I uh, don't have to go all the way through the whole thing here. Because <laughs> it looks like uh, my kidnapped settler is pretty close by here. Yep. And yeah, there's like uh, super powered vampires in here, of course. Yep. But your super powered flame gun kills the super powered vampires fairly easily. Umbra vampires, that's what they, like, these guys are. They're the Umbra Sanguine. They're the ones that can uh, summon those uh, things that look kind of like feral ghouls that are in indestructible. Yep. Like you can't actually hurt them, right? Yeah, see, so it says, light your target on fire, sift through the ashes. All right. So. Yeah, I'm thinking that this is probably a good weapon to use. The optimal weapon for vampire slaying. Yeah. See, and then they just put a couple gas canisters there to help out the tension trigger, right? Well, no, that was uh, probably for a little extra added damage. You know, like when, yep. the, gr when the grenades detonate, exactly. then uh, they'll blow up all of those fuel canisters and stuff like that too, right? Yep, just trying to make sure you get your uh, money's worth of getting killed. Yeah. Okay, well, looks like I got a live one up there. Yes, you reload that 42 round mag after one shot. Hey, I want to keep it full just in case. Now I have to eat something. Damn. What should we have? Vodka melon. No, uh, we'll have squirrel on a stick and wild mute fruit. It's foggy in here. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, that'll take care of him before he creates some other problem for you. Yeah, well, when they summon those things, about all you can do is run away and wait for the... Uh, uh, spell to expire. You know? Yep. Because it will expire after a while and then those things disappear, but you can't hurt them no matter what kind of weapon you use. They're they're basically... Uh... Do they die if the vampire dies? Uh, no, actually, I don't think so. They persist. Hey, you know what? I'm even further away from that now. I wonder if I should have just gone the other way. Maybe you should have just gone the other way.
it would have to be the place with the vampires that I have to go and rescue this settler. Of course. Well, now it makes more sense how the guard was overpowered. Huh. I think the they are above you. Yeah, I think I went the wrong way and I'll probably just uh That's a lot of ghouls. Oh, crap. Nothing there now. That's right. There's nothing there now. Oh, right there on your right. Well, it pays to be an accurate marksman. Yep. Well, luckily that uh, guy didn't actually summon any of those uh, those things, so... It must be something they only do when they detect you. Probably, yeah. Oh yes, I have a feeling that you've gone the wrong way. Yep, I think I'm gonna go, uh... This way here. Because maybe my settler was actually being held fairly close to the, uh... Entrance to this place. There's another one up here. That's right. The jet will make you jittery. See, it's only pickpocketing the, the ghoul and stealing from the ghoul until the ghoul is dead. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's gonna lean right up against that beam, huh? Probably. Can you shoot him from here? All right, should have a clear shot at him there. Yeah, you don't want to start off as one of... You don't want to become one of these Umbra Sanguine Vampires either because uh, they start off with a very low humanity rating. I think they start off with like a, a humanity rating of four. Oh. And if your humanity drops below four, you almost become uh, an unplayable uh, character. What the hell was that? 
Wow, look at that, eh? I guess they're a little more resistant to fire than, uh, uh, a, uh, vampire is. Yeah. Because I can remember reading in the, in the mod description that, uh, if your humanity slips too low, basically you just become a mindless monster. Ah. And, uh, you know, the Umbra Sanguine are, uh, you know, just not very far away from, uh, you know, becoming mindless monsters, right? I see, I see. And so whenever you get infected by one of these guys, you go and you run away to uh, a yeah, doctor. Yeah, you, you, you go find a doctor, yeah, because you don't want to become one of these guys. Unless you want to try it out just just for the, uh, you know, like, experiencing the, the thing. But for this playthrough, I don't think I want to do that. Something's up. Okay, yes, now I'm back into mortal raiders again here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking railing, eh? <laughs> yeah, this thing can vaporize vampires, but it can't vaporize a railing. That's right. Wow. It's alien technology from another world that can vaporize things, but it still can't get past that railing. That's what they need to do. If you want to build defenses in real life, you just need to build, like, all these railings. Yeah, I know. That'll 100% stop all the bullets coming your way. Yeah. Yeah, if you're under fire and outnumbered, crouch behind a railing. You'll be fine. <laughs> <clears throat> Tank main gun goes off, bounces off railing. Yep, that's right. It'll uh, be redirected by the railing and then... Too late, he already did. Scared, huh? Okay, so maybe it wasn't the vampires that took them, maybe it was actually just the dumbass raiders. It was probably just the dumbass raiders, yeah. Okay, that makes a lot less sense again, because first of all, your settlement has defenses, then you have that guard, and then that guard is also still alive. Well, I'm uh, kind of wondering why the vampires let these raiders live, too. <laughs> uh, maybe they provide a consistent food source. You never know. Yeah. Well, see, when you first came through here, though, the first time, remember uh, that door we, well, where we shot those first two raiders? Yep. Before coming up here? Um, they actually had that door chained, right? Yep. So that uh, the vampires on the other side couldn't open the door and come after them. Or in the case of the vanilla game, the uh, um, feral ghouls down there couldn't come through the door and come after them. Okay, well, we still have to somehow solve the mystery of where is the settler? Try up these stairs. I don't remember now if this was just a dead end or not. Yeah, this is a dead end here. I guess we need to keep going up. Those set of stairs, maybe. <clears throat> Hyperactive turret shooting in the dark. Well, it was aiming at me, but. You know what, it appears that at least their application of uh, uh, physics is, is consistent in that manner. If I couldn't shoot down on that slope, 
out of target, well, neither can it. music. It's just that stealth action. Yeah. Oh, this is a dead end set of stairs, too. Uh. <clears throat> Although, according to this, I'm very close. I wonder if that settler spawned inside a wall or something dumb like that. Right? I wonder. Right? Sure looks like it, doesn't it? Do you think so? I don't know. It sure looks that way. Because I'm back at the beginning oh. now. Right? Well, shall we take a look? We could TCL and take a quick look. Yeah, we might have to do that. Because, uh... Like, I can, tr I can try, uh... Okay. This set of oh, oh here, here go. we go. Okay. Sweet. Yes. Well, you're not very friendly considering. Yeah, that you're yes looking. is not the response I would expect for saving your ass. I would more expect, oh, thank God, oh God, oh, help me, save me, get me out of here. Don't something worry. along those lines. I'm here to rescue you. Oh my god, thank you. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Let's get out of this place. Wow. You know what? I went a whole lot more effort than I really needed to here. Yeah, she was right there the whole time. Yeah. Oh well, these things can't be helped. At least you got an adjustable wrench out of it. Yeah. What the hell was that? That was the chest closing behind you, the toolbox. Oh. It was just really loud for some reason. Jeez, now I gotta... Okay, here we go. We gotta go this way. Okay, we'll do a quick save here. F5 is your friend. And then we'll pause briefly as we go back outside. All right. And we're back. Yep, here we are, we're back. And we're getting out of here. Come on, Settler. The best part would be is uh, if, if uh, you forgot to disarm a trap or something and the Settler walks across it and dies. Actually, I don't really even have to wait for the Settler. I can just go straight back and uh, if I talk to the other Settler and close this one out, it's just kind of assumed that this one will make it, right? Yep. So we'll go across country. You could sprint across country. Oh, I could. I could sprint across country. Because I can see the lighthouse from here. Settlement attack. Robots. Again, robots. Can 
Can you close the quest out before they get here? Excuse me. I don't know how to thank you for that rescue you pulled off. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's good to know we can count on the Minutemen when we need them. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And now it's a war zone out there again. That's right. It would appear they are trying to get around. Now oh, the gun turrets I got him. That's right. You see, they couldn't get around the fence. Yep. Yeah, they were trying, weren't they? Yeah. Well, you got some that actually came right way down into the beach, eh? Yeah, but they couldn't get around the fence either. Yep. <laughs> and those strategically placed gun turrets on that boat. It was worth keeping the, the boat. Yep, it was. It was totally worth keeping the boat. Now, and even that, if the boat is kind of an awkward structure to build on, you can put gun turrets on it. Yep, yeah, it was definitely worth the effort. I think I need a higher point of view here because I think there still is uh, another robot or two out there yet. But maybe we'll go in here and have a drink of water first. I know the robots are attacking, but I'm thirsty, damn it. Yep. Okay, let's see if we can spot any robots. I think I see a dead one over there. Maybe the provisioner got him. Okay. Boy, we're still getting that intense uh, Dunwich Boars soundtrack. Yeah. Well, you never know. Maybe one of those uh, vampires did s summon some of those ghoul things, but I just never uh, saw them and they didn't see me, right? Yeah, that's quite possible, actually. Okay. I guess that's a mercenary. They must have been shooting it out with a merchant or something over here. That's what was going on over here. Well, you got dead robots. Oh. Death by shopping cart. The impenetrable fence of anti-Brahmin looting. Yeah. Well, that's a robot, apparently. Steadfast Dual 44 Magnums. Uh. <clears throat> Plus 50 damage resistance when aiming. Okay, well. Wadi da. Maybe I'll uh, demonstrate the dual uh, pistol thing, which is uh, another mod done by Neher, by the way. Nice. A few other people used his uh, um, uh, resources for their own mods, like for their own dual wielding mods. Yep. But he's the first guy that came out with that. And it basically it looks more or less like this. So if we uh, equip them, of course, then uh, you've got two of them, right? But you may you, you basically aim at the same point. Yep. But what it does is it, uh, it doubles your mag size. Well, it basically doubles your mag size, but it also doubles your rate of fire. Yep. So there you go. Of course, it looks kind of funny. You end up holstering both of them on the same side. <laughs> That is kind of funny, but oh yep. well. I guess these things can't be helped. But I'd rather keep Eddie's piece anyway, I think, because the Steadfast... Um, steadfast is not as good as Eddie's piece. 
Well, I mean, you know what? I've already got uh, good defense. Sixteen hundred armor. I mean, I don't think another fifty points is really going to make a lot of difference, right? So we'll uh, drop a bunch of this junk off. Because we're carrying a fair amount. I don't think I picked up any armor pieces here. No. I have to eat something again now. Wow. All these needs all the time. The ultra dramatic iguana yeah. on a stick. Yeah, you know what? That sounds tasty. Let's do that. We'll have iguana on a stick. The most intense crafting session known to man. Yeah. Well... Let's see here. I don't think I need to carry around that many grenades or mines or that missile launcher. And I don't think I need to carry those around either. Yeah, so, uh, you know, like the 44 Magnums come in uh, dual, like dual pistols. You can also get the Juger pistols in dual pistols as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you can also find them singly, right? Yep. Like the one I have is one that's like just a single pistol. Mm -hmm. When you find two of them, though, you find two as a as a match set, kind of, right? Yep. I don't know whether this silly music's going to stop or not, or whether we have to uh, maybe uh, reset the game in order to get it to quit. It's just the most intense workshop depositing experience that anyone has ever witnessed, okay? Uh, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> She's sitting there, her eyes are wide, her brow is sweaty while she's depositing things into the workbench. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I think we're good to go. Oh, I just heard an explosion. Well, I'm not in combat anymore, apparently. Let's see if I can crash on this couch. <laughs> the world's most intense sofa surfing, okay? Well, I... Whoa, what was that? Something blew up over there. Okay, well, that's going to drive me crazy in short order, so I think <laughs> we're going to have to pause the game and then try and restart it to see if we can get rid of that. All right. Well, we're just going to have to tolerate the super intense uh, Enclave music there. Yeah, well, you know what? Um, Sometimes a script gets stuck. Yeah, hopefully this will uh, resolve itself at some point. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to head for Far Harbor now. No further delays. Right on. Uh, as soon as we find our... Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, no, that one. This one, yeah. 
Yep, you can go and make your super intense journey to Far Harbor. Yeah, boy, oh boy. <laughs> I, know, I find this kind of shit funny. I do. Yeah, well, you know, hopefully we're not stuck with this forever and ever. I might be going up the wrong road here. Go this way. We'll just we'll just rebrand ourselves as the most intense Fallout 4 playthrough on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know what? It, the, the music matches the pace of your sprinting. Does it? Close enough. Okay, dog's over there. Dogs and raiders? Dogs and raiders. Obviously, my, uh... My revolvering needs a little work. Well, you know what? You've got lots of time to master a new weapon. Well, it looks like the raider won that one. <laughs> oh, the dog was still chewing on him, too. Yeah. Bolstering Ranger's chest piece. Yeah, well, this weapon I'm almost out of ammunition for. So I will have to abandon it at some point because I don't think I have any way to get more. Right? Which is why I kind of, uh, you know, started, Use it started, well, I started working on, on basically some other types of guns for close quarter type work, right? Yep. Because I know that the, uh, exotic weapons that I brought back from the pocket universe, the ammunition for them isn't going to hold out forever. Yeah, just save like 20 shots and give it to a settler. Yeah. So I can stop in here briefly and drop a bunch of stuff off here at the coastal cottage. Oh, look, we've got a Brahmin. Got all kinds of good shit now. Yeah, well, we'll have to put in a... a feed trough for our Brahmin here. It looks like we got six people here, too, so we're going to need more water. There, we'll do something kind of cool like that, right? Yep. There. Like this guy who happens to be uh, unemployed. <clears throat> New around here. I wanted to introduce myself. We just hey, wanted to going? say how grateful we are for the opportunity. I'm ready to help with whatever you need. Just say the word. Just wanted to trade a few things. Sure okay. thing. Let's trade a few things. I wonder if I have anything to trade him. Uh, not really, no. Hey, get out of my workshop. Nope. Oh, I do have something I could trade him. I could give him that combat rifle. Mm. 
Where did he go? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man, you gotta love it. Oh, there you are. Careful out there. Yeah. I just need to trade gear with you. Okay. Yeah, let's trade. I'll give you this combat rifle. So you can help defend the settlement a little better. Now, have I got something I can trade to you? No. Okay. The pipe gun for you, then. All right, well, let's have a look at what we got here. We got six foods, so we should probably plant a few more crops. You see what I mean about this uh, looking after settlements being a full-time job kind of thing, right? Yep. These guys are completely incapable of uh, doing anything for themselves. like you're going to be our uh, volunteer farmer here. Okay, you're a guard already, and you're a guard already, and uh, you're a farmer, even though you're up here wandering around aimlessly into the corner of that thing. See, I've read all sorts of articles on how do you identify uh, synths in your settlements, and they say all kinds of things like that they'll be acting weird and doing... But you know what? All of all your settlers at one point or another act weird and do stuff like that. Yeah, like it's a Bethesda like, game. Like you can't... Yeah, exactly. You can't <laughs> tell. There aren't any indications. <laughs> okay, well... What we'll do is we'll put in a, a few uh, guard posts here. I don't know what it was trying to clip onto there, but it really wanted to clip onto it, whatever yeah. it is. Well, there are snap points on the edges of these guard post pieces now. So if you go close enough to the edge of a fence piece, then the edge of the guard post piece will try and snap onto that, right? Uh huh. <laughs> hmm. Okay, well, that's one. You could always turn one of these guys into a provisioner, too. Well, I've already pretty much got all the provisioners that I that I need for this immediate area now, right? Yeah, like you got them all, all linked up. But the defense value on this settlement is pretty low. Yep. So, uh... You gotta make sure that they can uh, help themselves. Okay, I think I got a, a computer to manage things here somewhere. Okay, so everybody has a job now. We got two farmers, three guards, and a caravan. Or wait. Uh, okay, I got a few fusion cells I can grab here. Okay. By the way, did you know you can do this? <laughs> yeah, just relocate the Brahmin out of your way. Yeah. If it happens to be uh, your Brahmin anyway, right? Can't do that with, uh, like, say, Trash Can Carlos Brahmin or something like that, but if it happens to be one that lives in your settlement, then yeah, you can do that. We'll just leave those guys alone. They're not hurting anything, and I've got no reason to go over there. Well, it appears that that music has finally stopped anyway. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, it finally ran out of the script or something. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's funny you couldn't clear it just by reloading the game, eh? Well, maybe the ghouls or whatever that one of those things someone died or something. Yeah. Whoa. On your right. On your right again. Nope. Yep. Way over there. Any more? Oh yeah, you might want to pick up some more fusion cells for your sniping weapon. Yeah. Well, maybe I can uh, get some in Far Harbor. It's so foggy there that long distance sniping is not really a thing there anyway. True. And since we've been here before, we don't have to stop and talk to the fisher people there. We can just uh, go and jump on the boat. And away we go. Travel to Far Harbor. After we have a drink of water. Water drinker. Yeah, well, what can you do? I know, the game has decided that other forms of hydration are not valid. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I probably haven't had a glass of water in like 10 years. Really? Yeah. Nothing but... Nothing but, uh... Carbonated, uh... Soft drink, eh? Yeah, no, nothing but pop and coffee. Pop and coffee. <laughs> well, Actually, and, and, and I guess occasionally the occasional energy drink, too. Yeah. But not so much these days. No, I find those things just make me thirstier, to tell you the truth. that Those and pop, too. That's why I don't drink pop very much, either. Well, I drink the sugar-free stuff, so... Uh, the sugar isn't there to dehydrate me. I think that's what dehydrates you with pop. Mm. Oh yeah, like I'll, I'll get dehydrated if I have a coffee or something. I don't know how you can have like five million cups of coffee a day. I don't have five million cups of coffee a day. Well, you have a lot more than uh, three or four. Well, that kind of depends on... Uh... <laughs> How busy I am and, uh, you know, what I'm doing and that kind of stuff, right? Coffee's actually good before a workout. Yeah, 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 it is. Right? You know, opens up those blood vessels and, uh, uh, you know, like lets, lets the blood flow a little easier. And... Yep. Okay. So we need to go now, if I remember correctly... Mainlanders don't last long on the island. Yes. You need oh, look, there's a fan, Finn's down. sheriff guy all the way out here. <laughs> uh, go figure. Yes. Yeah, the, the, it looks like the Fen's sheriff's department has got a uh, presence out here. Isn't that interesting? You wouldn't have expected them to. Well, you know, I guess we did, te uh, technically, we did win the game. As with, the Fen's sheriff's as, department. As the Fen's sheriff's department, right? Yep. I'm actually a, I'm actually a deputy. I'm not carrying my badge right now. But remember, the sheriff gave me a badge. Yep. And made me a deputy. Yep. So anyway, we're gonna go into the bar here because that's is where we're we have to go and meet. Uh, uh, who is that guy's? What's that guy's name again? Now, 
that guy sitting over there. Oh, I don't even remember now. Old Longfellow. Yeah. I guess I picked up the magazine. There, like, there's usually a uh, uh, Islander's Almanac magazine sitting on the table next to him, right? Yeah, you must have picked it up already. But I must have picked it up already the last time I was here. Captain Avery said you can get me to Acadia? There was a scuffle out there. You get your hands dirty? <laughs> I'm done leaving people to their deaths in the fog. Last fella couldn't keep up. In the last five minutes. Okay. Well, I'm so looking for a runaway. parents are about their runaway daughter. She went to Acadia, and I need to find her. If someone's headed for Acadia, there's always a story. Yours worth dying over, huh? Yeah. Trust me. I've done a whole lot more. For a whole lot less. Clever with words, <laughs> are you? I could get you to Acadia. But you've got to listen to me. Go where I say, when I say it. Still won't be easy. You stock up on your necessities, Rad. That's okay. I'm good. <laughs> yep. I don't even carry that stuff anymore. Let's go, Longfellow. Follow me. How are we doing for time here, anyway? We are just over an hour. Okay. Well, I think it only takes a few minutes to make it to Arcadia, in spite of the fact that they make out like it's an epic journey. But we'll pause for a moment while we go outside. All right. And we're back. Yep. You might want to take we, and of course, this might take a little bit longer because this guy does that half NPC jog. half half speed jog, right? Yeah, why do they all half jog? Why is that a thing? Yeah, I don't know why they can't just run at full speed. I mean, really. Now he is. Like, he draws his rifle and now he's running at full speed. Okay, what are we doing here? See the fog into a number on me. Get you all turned around. Rappers were mean to begin with. What the hell happened? Yeah, you reload that gun twice. Well, whatever that guy's being covered by. It's a railing. Meat hook. Okay. Did he change guns? That doesn't look like the same gun he started off with. Ah, uh, maybe. Who knows? You come back, you're dead. Silence. Huh? Never a good sign. Must, was this guy on the roof here or something? Where did he go? Yeah, he's going to be on the roof. Yep, there he is. Cavalier's baton. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, see, it looks like he started off with one of those uh, lever action rifles, but he seems to have uh, picked up something else. Picked up something else. He's got a combat shotgun with a drum magazine on it. Uh. Well, then, what's next? well, it seems to work out well for him, anyways. We ain't alone here. the mountain trail. If we stick to this, it will make it to Acadia. Game trails crisscross the road, so don't be surprised if we got local wildlife to deal with. 
Like that. Wow, everything is legendary out here now. I'm not going to pick that up because I don't think you can actually eat wolf. No? No. But you can eat dog. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Go figure. It's just something I seem to remember. Crawler, they usually stick to the deep fog. Unless we steer clear. But you never know. Eventually rolled back. People resettled, but they got comfortable. Started taking things for granted. Folk got short memories. All this has happened before. What was that? Uh oh. Oh wow, those Mirelurks really don't like that frost effect, do they? No. Well, I ought to have some uh, cooking to do now. Yep. Now the big ones, they can grow two, three times the size of a man. Good thing you don't see too many of them around. So it looks like my uh, little Ruger Mark V is a fairly effective weapon, eh? Yeah, it looks like, actually. Oh, oh, oh. ghouls. Yeah, I'd say about the only drawback to this gun is that it has a rather small magazine size. And I didn't I just didn't happen to have uh the materials on hand to make an extended magazine back when I was fitting this thing up, right? Yep. Okay, well. Yeah, let's have some gumdrops. We've got lots of those. old man well what have we here another rad worshiping lunatic that's what your barbs do not harm me i am shielded by my faith how about bullets faith <laughs> who's she one of them children of adam preachers started off as pests now they're more like a menace do not sully this one with your blasphemy old man you I suggest you go no further. Acadia is a nest of snakes. Beasts that subvert the will of Adam. <laughs> you do know you're crazy, right? Watch yourself, outsider. You walk through Adam's kingdom now. If you're done wasting time with a fanatic, let's move on. <laughs> Up ahead, the air is clean. No fog. Gady is not too far now. And just on time, too. It's starting to get dark out. This place must get pretty dark with uh, darker nights. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it would be. Like with the fog and everything else, too. That's why I, I'm turning darker nights off in order to play this, because uh, 
it's just easier to record. Yeah. And we've arrived. Katie has already been watching us for a good spell. If you want to talk with them, just go inside. They'll be waiting for you. You need my help again. You come see me. Got a cabin just outside of Far Harbor. Good place to tool up your gear, get some rest, or get stinking drunk. <laughs> hmm. Just make sure if you're bringing a bottle of something strong, there's enough to share. Well, why don't you come, you with, come me. with me? I can still use your help. <laughs> All right. Why the hell not? Beats drinking alone. Okay, well, I think at this point we'll uh, call it an episode and we'll go in and uh, you know get ourselves acquainted with this place in the next episode. All right. Because now that we have uh, caught up with this a bit, we uh, need to uh, find the missing runaway that belongs to those fishermen that live in that house where we took this boat. Indeed. Because that was what the whole purpose of them letting us use their boat was to begin with. Yep. So anyway, in the next episode, I guess we'll carry on with that. Until then, I'm Rekvi5. And I am Sandman99. Have a good one.